Uh, we're at Romford Film Festival. I have the great honour of talking to Rebecca Louisa Smith, the film doctor. Thank you very much for coming and daring to venture out during the current climate. Have you uh, done much in the world of film festivals in this year? <laughs> well, the last film festival that I was at was in California. I was attending the uh, CineQuest and the Idleworld Film Festival and they were the last two back in March. So I've, everything else has been online. So today is like an absolutely wonderful day because I get to wear a new dress that was made for film festival. And also is that I get to get that vibe again. It was just so nice today. Like everyone like, you know, wanting to go in and seeing like photographers and having to work the room. So it was brilliant. It's really nice. And I was really excited because we've got a lot of our films here. So it's really nice to see, you know, the vibe of coming back out now from our homes to the festival world, so it's perfect. So for those that aren't aware of who you are, would you like to tell us a little bit about who, what you do? So I'm the CEO and founder of a company called The Film Festival Doctor, and what we do is we create for our clients successful film festival campaigns. So we create for them the right strategy to get their films seen in the right film festivals around the world for their film. So people come to us with the problem being that we don't know what to do with our film, which festivals do we get into, how do we, how do we create our strategy, how do we submit, what do we do with it. So we answer those questions and resolve those problems by putting it into the right film festivals to achieve their goals. And uh, you've, you've got a history of actually uh, running film festivals yourself, haven't you? Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you've been involved in? So my background is film festival uh, production. So I co-produced a wonderful film festival called the Abattoir Horror Festival in Wales. Yes. It's a great name. Yes. And the guy, Gaz Bailey, that created that whole festival is one, of the, is one in a million, he's amazing. And he did it all just because he was asked to uh, create a festival that was horror, because there wasn't any horror festival in Wales at that time. And they thought it would be a good place to do in Aberystwyth, because it's a student town. And obviously students like horror, which mm -hmm. they do. And he's a massive horror fan, he knows films inside out. So it began like a hobby for me and for him, but then it became a lot more serious. And I actually realised during the festival that this is actually what I want to do. I don't want to be, I mean, PhD, I was studying for my PhD at the time, so I have a doctorate in film. I'm, I'm a doctor, so I'm a real doctor, not of medicine, um, but of philosophy. And, uh, and PhD is great, but I just wasn't feeling that academia was going to be my passion or my career. But I really like film festivals. So I said to Gaz, I said, oh, I'm really enjoying this. It's like a full-time thing now. And then when I was speaking to filmmakers at film festivals and also at Abattoir, they always had the same problem, that they didn't know who to turn to to get their films into film festivals and how to get into the right ones and win awards. They didn't know what to do. They were just hoping for the best and submitting where they could without a box back in the day. So I was like, well, I can resolve these problems. I'm going to set up a company up. I'm going to make this happen because I know what to do now. I've learned the festival circuit, producing festivals and touring the, cir touring the circuit with other films. Mm -hmm. so. And what do you think is going to be the result on the film industry of COVID-19? I think there's been a lot of good things and bad things. So obviously there was a, you know, a massive hiatus for like, what, three months, four months of no production. But now filmmakers are finding ways to creatively work around that. And I've already actually, I've just begun working on a short film to represent that's just in the process of now sending it to festivals, which was made like a day after the lockdown UK. And it was all socially distance set and it was in a, um, in a pub. So it was, in terms of locations, it was, you know, quite easy to work around. It took three or four days to film and I did it all remotely at home. And now it's finished and it's a great movie. So I think people are finding creative ways to make films and not just having to rely on, you know, thousands of people and, you know, find ways to do it differently. So that's possible. I think, I just don't think we're going to see like a, a drought of films. There's a lot of festivals said to me, there was a rumour that, you know, we, maybe we won't get any submissions later on in the coming months because not many films have been in production. But there's always a film in post. There's always a short flying around. There was a really good short flying around. People have made films in lockdown that have been quite good, some of them. So it's never going to be a drought. There's creativity every day around the world. So it's never going to end. I always joke, I've got films that I've made that are sat on my shelf. <laughs> and actually during lockdown, it would have been the ideal opportunity for me to have edited those together and get those out. So I'm sure that there are other filmmakers that have had exactly the same 
dilemma. I've got these films, they're sat on my shelf. I should really edit those together. So I think we'll probably see a lot of those. And there already is, in fact, I'll tell you a good story of that because um, the film that we have here, one of our films here, that's on the, on the brochure on the cover, I'm registered. So um, the director, um, Sophia Banks, she, she had made a few months ago or so her follow-up short called Proxy. And she said, oh, it's going to be in post for a while, we're busy filming, and da 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 And then when lockdown occurred, she's like, well, I can actually get on finishing it now. And then we finished it during end of May, and then we got it submitted into festivals, and it's already got a few selections now. So, I mean, it wouldn't, that would have been delayed much mm. longer. And then she's like, well, I'm going to focus on it now because I've got the time. It's a luxury of time. So now we have another amazing film to get into festivals, and it's already got some results that are great festivals, so we're really happy about that. Do you think that some of the films that have gone to the online format, do you think that that will spark the change from physical to online, or do you think all those that have made the move will return back to their normal format? They're going to return back to their normal format from what I'm hearing and when I'm talking to festivals about it, but some of them are seeing the value that online can bring for worldwide audiences for the industry section of their festival. So, for example, the hybrid model seems very popular right now that people are starting to embrace, where it's like partly online, partly live. Um, so, for example, I know that TIFF obviously are doing that, but even some festivals have found, like Setica, that they're going to go online, but they did say that they found ways that they can make the festival work the next year's festival by doing both, you know, like have the, have the kind of live screenings and the live yeah. events but then to actually, at the same time, stream them around the world to get more of an audience, to actually get access to industry speakers and connect. So it, it's got some value there. I mean, at first, we were all a little bit confused, like, what, what, what are we going to do? But then uh, festivals adapted <coughs> very quickly to working around the whole online film festival thing and around COVID. And there have been some very good online festivals, um, and I've been quite impressed overall with people's energy toward it to make it work. So, yeah. If you really putting you on the spot here, but if you had three really good tips that you could give to a filmmaker in order to make their film more successful, because we often hear when we're showing films here that we've given a film a chance. Mm -hmm. I always say that like all these films, they have this amazing potential, but maybe something's not quite. What three tips would you give to a filmmaker to increase their chances of getting their film seen? Well, the first one would be is, it's all about the story and the script. So it has to be a very good script with good dialogue, not boring dialogue, but well-written script. And the story has to have some kind of flair and creativity to it. So some kind of story that isn't conventional, A, B, C, D, boy meets girl, boy gets the girl back. We know that story inside out. So tell us something that's a lot more edgy visionary and also something that takes risks because that's going to be more interesting for festivals and the audiences at festivals too. Number two would be sound like I can't forgive bad sound I can't take a film on that sound when you muffled or it's from the camera it needs to be professional sound and that is something people do miss sometimes it was shorts especially um, so that that's certain crucial and the third one would be the length because there is a little rule that any short film can be shorter and that even a film that's amazing could be a bit shorter. Mm. So you've got to be really ruthless and just think, do I need it to be that length? Can it be a bit shorter to really have that punch? And the answer's probably going to be yes. Some films you do think could be a bit longer when you see a short. It does happen occasionally. But most of the time to get it where it needs to be a short, tighten it up as much as you can and don't go too overindulgent. So keep it the right length it needs to be. Features as well, mm. same with the feature. Um, but just really have someone else review it and kill your darlings, because that way you'll get awards. We, I used to find that my cut of a film was always two hours and 35 <laughs> minutes, and then I would hand it over to Marcus, and before I'd know it, it would be like an hour and 18 yeah. minutes. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Like, where's that from? <coughs> it's like a better film. Yeah. And that's the, that's, the, that's the thing, isn't it? It's those, it's almost an offence to edit your own film, isn't yeah, it, really? It is. yeah. um, you were affected personally as a result of COVID-19 because you were about to make a lifestyle change, were you not? So, um, so I uh, applied for a O1A visa to uh, move and work to, to the US and 
during lockdown it was accepted and they said you passed it's everything's fine they've got all the evidence they need you have it you've got to go now obviously you can you can when you can get there you can then you know have your life in LA and I'm still waiting to get on a plane <laughs> so there's been a travel ban in, in place since the end of March um, we're gonna have to lift it at some point so I'll, I have an apartment and staff in LA and I'm ready now to make the move there and it's all been approved so I'm very happy um, it's just with the US it's it's a little bit difficult over there because up there I've gone backwards over there with COVID um, but you just have to wait for the, for the planes to open up they have mentioned that there will be but they're not allowing tourists in like tourist visas like Esther because they don't want to have too many come at once yeah. obviously and pace things out but if you have reason to live there then it's a bit different so I'm looking forward to getting there at some point this year which I will um, but everything's set up ready to be to go there I've got an event that I run is ready to go when I get there which is okay. called Visionary Filmmakers that I produce and is at El Cid in Sunset which is wonderful I've got clients there we've got new films we're working on who are based there too and uh, I'm just can't wait to get there so but I've accepted it it was quite it was the only the hardest thing during COVID for me to adapt to has been that it's been hard to accept it at first because it was just so so much uncertainty about that I couldn't stay grounded and it was quite stressful but since then I have learned and had a lot of um, a lot of like therapy to do that to help me just stay grounded yes. and how to approach it how to accept it and uh, you know just go with the flow if you resist it'll get too stressful so when I did that I was like oh I'm a bit better now so I can enjoy each day and then just get there I'm going to get there at some point so I'm okay um, but everything else during COVID, I, I kind of enjoyed lockdown because I got to do lots and lots of work and I'm about to launch a new product which I'll tell, talk more about when I'm allowed to. Uh, that's something different, not film, but I've launched a blog, we had new films, we've got great results for our current movies. What I liked in lockdown in the beginning was your everyday nomination. I'd be like, oh, any of our films today? They'd be like, oh, another one, there's G and there's a registered and there's seconds out. So we're like, oh, good, this is so exciting. So that was like keeping the morale up. Um, but no, I, I, I did okay. Um, and I mean, I was actually in the US when the pandemic kicked off. I took the last flight back to the UK. Um, because my apartment in LA was ready, was ready in June when I could move in, but then obviously then I, I couldn't move in then because of, of the obvious reasons. Uh, so it was a bit weird and touch and go. And it was very weird in America, people going mad and buying toilet rolls like they were here. It was a bit strange. Yeah. My mum texted me and she's like, have you got toilet rolls? I was like, yes. <laughs> I was like, why? And she said, oh, there's no toilet rolls anymore. I was like, what? And she was true. And I was like, that can't be Asda. <laughs> with like empty like toilet rolls. And also the same thing with like nappies and paracetamol. Yeah. It went a bit weird. But I was like, I'm, I'm missing this now, so. Um, have you got anything really exciting coming up in terms of projects that have come onto your slate that you can tell us anything about films that you may be submitting towards different festivals, maybe ourselves next year? Uh, yes, so we've taken on during lockdown a fantastic show called The Gesture and the Word, which stars uh, James Michael Tyler, who is also known as Gunther from Friends. Okay. That's a beautiful short, and uh, that's already got quite a few invites, um, which is great because it's, uh, it's literally just like doing the submissions. We've got quite a lot of early ones come in, and that will do the circuit for a good year or more because it's got a lot of longevity to it. Um, the other one we've taken on recently is uh, one called 09 that's from Iraq and is very, very beautifully shot, very interesting film. And we also had a few lockdown movies that were really interesting that we worked on. Uh, one of them was looking at the point of view of a child and how he missed going to school and it was so original mm -hmm. and so beautifully done. So that was one I was very proud of and that's gone to festivals already. Um, and also one more which we just took on um, that was called, it's called The Reunited States and it is a gem and it's already got now three amazing festivals in the States, um, Rhode Island International Film Festival, Nashville and Cinequest. So we'll get some more, I'm sure, but it's a really heartbreaking documentary. So Every time I see it, I, I, I cry a little bit. I don't really do that, but it's like one of my films I work on. I was like, oh God, it's, it's very, very poignant. So I'm very pleased about that one that's done so well. The really interesting thing that I find about you and your work is that you truly are global in yeah. terms of the festivals that you attend on behalf of your clients, the festival where the, your film stock comes from. Yeah. So if anyone stumbles across this video yeah. uh, in, in almost any country, you will help them to get their film out there. Um, how difficult is that to navigate in terms of things like uh, 
I don't know, communication times, language, understanding, especially when you take on a project that's quite fresh from somewhere that, say, isn't natively English speaking? Well, I'm all right with time zones because um, I tend to always have my phone on me, but then I'm actually open and I'm happy to have calls and do stuff in the evenings anyway, no matter what I'm doing, it's lockdown or no lockdown, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm, obviously LA is a big difference, it's like eight hours behind. So literally when they start getting in the office around 9am or 10am their time, that's five or six hour time in UK. So I'm happy to, I know my, my day kind of goes in the morning, like really busy, it's stuff overnight from LA before they go to bed and also from NYC and other parts of America like Dallas and, uh, and Phoenix for example, those the, their time zones. And then I'll do all the stuff in the day, do the hard graphs, speak to my team, do the bits and whatever. Then there might be a little bit quiet in the afternoon, but then four o'clock onwards, it'll start to get busier because it's the other side of the world opening up. So it works okay because filmmakers tend to be not nine to five either. So as we all adapt to being 24 seven, it works really well. And festivals are the same. I mean, festivals will reach out to us any time of the day because of their time zone. So we're just all in together, really. I'm always amazed because you are the only other lunatic that I know that is awake uh, around 6am. I think almost every single message we have exchanged yeah. has been in the very early hours of the morning. I'm and I'm, so. I'm, always, I'm always quite happy that I'm not the only one that's awake and working at 6 o'clock in the morning. Well, you get a lot of ideas and inspo at that kind of time. And also before it gets busier because you don't get any harassment or whatever because you've got the time to think about it. So it's quite handy. So just a quick, um, how can people communicate with you, website, etc.? Do you want to give us a little plug for all of those things? So website is thefilmfestivaldoctor.com and Instagram, you can message and follow me and uh, communicate with me on there which is at Rebecca Film Doctor. So that's R-E-B-E-K-A-H-F-I-L-M-D-R. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for the phenomenal uh, array of films that you've let us uh, have this year. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, we wish you well for the next uh, coming months as more and more festivals start to open up their doors. Really excited. And thank you. It's great to be here. And thank you for having uh, all of our films and looking after them. I really appreciate it. Thank you.